Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you please type the number one in the chat box, let me know that you can. To make things easy for the day, one for yes, two for no is an easy way to answer. Uh, it definitely helps increase participation a little bit. Afternoon, Kevin. Brenda, afternoon. John, good afternoon. Morning, Helen. All right. Lots and lots and lots of ones in there. I appreciate it. Happy Monday to everybody. There you go. Uh, let me see if I can't go ahead and get on a... Camera, it's me. All right. Well, I hope you're all doing well today. As we get started, keep in mind that everything we look at, it's going to fix this monitor here, uh, is for education. Nothing's meant to be advice or recommendations. If you find something you like, anything, make sure it fits your own personal risk profile and risk tolerance. All right. So lots happening here this week. Guys, got trading you coming up tonight, inner circle coming up um, this evening. It's the check in. Mastermind group coming up uh, tomorrow. The 16th is Wealth with Spreads QA. Mastering the trade is coming up on the 17th. What we don't have on here is this Friday is our uh, Trader Super Summit. And that is for everybody that is in inner circle and mastermind. We're doing it online this year only. Uh, you'll be registered automatically for it. Uh, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me know that I'm not sharing my screen there. Uh, what one do I want to share? Pick the right one. Bueno. All right. I also realized I don't have my drawing tools open, so let's get those started right away. Uh, if you like it, then you should have put a fib on it. Yes, if it sounds like a Beyonce song, it is. Uh, just like it. So that's coming up uh, next week on the 22nd and the 28th. Uh, let's see where that open up. All right, there we go. Uh, Power Hour, Cover Call Explorer, e Mini Think Tank are probably all on their regular schedule this week. We had a software update that we did this weekend. We were not able to get it completed. The company we moved moving over to uh, took them two days. Uh, still have not gotten back to us. We made a decision to jump in and, and do some things on our own without their recommendation on how to do it. We figured out another way around. They still haven't gotten back to us, but we have gotten the site migrated over uh now it's all of the contacts and everything we're going to be doing that again this thursday but we do believe there should be a very short downtime if any uh so we will keep you abreast of what's going on there if we need to move cover call and pop to wednesday again i will let you know we don't have an answer yet but we are going to be making that change again on thursday so you might see some interruption thursday night into friday morning you might see some there uh for trader super summit everybody that's there uh, that's coming is is registered automatically, so you don't need to do anything for that to happen. It just happens on its own. All right, here's our followers page. Oh, too fast, hey, fat fingers. Here's our followers page. Make sure you're following along to keep up with everything that um, that's going on. My calendar screen. This one right here, Jim. I think that's what you're looking for, Jim. When you say calendar screen, unless you want me to log into the website and to the members page. Uh, by the way, if you do notice anything off on the website, you know, the end of this week and so forth, Thursday, Friday, the weekend, please send us an email if you see something's missing, if you notice something is off, a graphic's gone, or um, you don't have access to something that you should have access to, let us know and we'll get that fixed up right away for you. Right here is our Trading Boss Manifesto. You can download this on robertjroy.com, on tradinglikeaboss.com, as well as on wealthbuildershq.com. If you like it, then you should have put a fib on it. Uh, Lee just dropped in a link for that, guys. You can go ahead and register for it. We're going to go over, we're going to go over three Fibonacci techniques that we're going to talk about, and that's a free training that I am doing. I haven't done anything on advanced on fibs in goodness, it's got to be seven years now since I've done it. And so much, so much has changed. Uh, so many other things have come to light that I've never even recognized before. So go ahead and get registered for those, those classes. You can click around that link. Um, yes, Tom said, if you like it, is that a new training? It is. It's brand new. Never taught before, Tom. Never taught before. So it is a brand new training. Um, and if you're not if you're not sure of the reference of the song, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Is what it is. Um, so so uh, we're going to go over some various techniques in there. We're going to go over some various tools. I'm going to lay out some plan in there. 
We're going to go over one specific trade setup inside of there. So uh, it'll be worth everyone's time, especially if you have any interest in learning how to trade properly, uh, to really get some of the components of FIBS down and down pat, which is what we're going to cover inside of there. All right. Uh, I don't want to hit that just yet. What trades did y'all do today? Drop them in. What did you do? What trades uh, went out for the day? Let me know. Funded, non-funded, I don't care. We consider everything here to be non-funded. Um, whether they were today on Thursday or Friday, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be just a today trade. But what trades have you done recently? Um, there you go, Brenda's all registered for it. John said, Wheel of Fortune, Google, Naked Puts, Sava, ENBX, and RKLB. The Naked Puts, um, our covered call explorer suggestion. Nice. Cash flow of 1300 bucks. Good job, John. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead and drop them in. Uh, and let me go over to Meta. Right? Guys, there's a reason that I focus very heavily on A pattern. Besides the fact that I don't have to think too hard and, and you know, my go-to answer all the time with this is, is this. You know, um, Thomas Edison had seven, seven suits in his closet. Every single one of them were the exact same suit. And when asked why, he said, I don't waste any brain power on trying to figure out what suit I should wear today. Right? He just did the exact same thing every day. That's me with my trade setups. We closed... With Meta, we closed on Friday with a, a rank of two, right? Bullish bias rank of two. We were very close to the fib line. The moving average just a little bit too far away for me. Uh, it wasn't there on Friday, right? That's part of the problem is you can't really see it there. That's where the moving average was. It was kind of in the middle of the channel there, right? That was our close. So as far as we're concerned, it was a moving uh, bullish bias rank of two, right? Today, we gapped up. I like that. So this morning, right before the market opens, I saw we were up a little bit, but I'm sitting back just relaxing and we were up in pre-market. And then on the open, we get the gap. So I'm position one in the chair. We get the gap on the open and I immediately go to position number two. I'm like, all right, now I already have a plan. That plan has already been formulated in my head when I saw what Meta was looking like on Friday's update for me, when I took all my notes on Friday. I saw what the plan looked like. I knew what the plan looked like. And I saw the gap that took place today. I knew the only way for me to take this trade would have been a pullback to that 591.82 level. And that's exactly what happened. And if you look, now keep in mind, it is a 500, almost $600 stock, right? So if we look at a five minute, you can see we gapped up and we pulled back within that first five minutes. So the question is, what really happened on our one minute candles very early on today, right? And... Uh, that's as close as I want to bring it in, right? So on this candle right here, this black candle right here, so the fourth candle of the day, we closed on that candle at 592.69. Our support line was 591.82, okay? So we got less than a dollar away from that level and we closed there. Okay, great. So I go from position one in the chair, pre-market, position two on the gap up, now we are we close right here on this fourth one minute candle and I'm leaning forward key, fingers are on the keyboard okay and what happens pure nirvana pure perfection the next candle opens up right runs down opens about flat runs down tags that fib line which is the the daily fib line it's just on an intraday chart tags it and bounces I'm looking for a move a little more than a dollar away. Now we closed a dollar, about a dollar away, just a little shy of it. But we closed about a dollar away, so I actually let it get up to about two bucks away. I think it was, yeah. So at five ninety four was the entry today, and I got out. Why, Rob? There's no fib line up there. I know, but now let's go back to the daily chart. I don't transfer hundred point levels over to the intraday charts. I should, but I have never done it before. So. Um, as we look here, right, we ran right into that $600 level. So I'm looking at being $2 shy of that level as a target. So did I crush it on the stock price? It was a $4 move. It wasn't a crazy price. And Rob, you got, come on, man, you got 592 all the way up to 600. There's $8. You only got four. Yeah. You got to allow it to bounce and you got to get out before it hits resistance. 
I don't want to be on the wrong side of that and we get a whipsaw. What if it breaks through? Then my trade worked. You know, here's the thing. If you are a baseball player and you're batting 320, 340, you know, 290, whatever the numbers are, you got a decent average there. And you, you, you know, you hit six home runs the entire year, but you're on base a lot and, and so on and so forth. Right. And then you decide that you just want to switch it up and become a home run hitter. And you start swinging for the fence instead of trying to get on base. And all of a sudden, your average becomes like Dave Kingman. You had awesome number of home runs for the New York Mets, right? But you were the, also known as the strikeout king, right? I don't want to be that. I, I don't want to be swinging for the fence over and over again. I'm happy to hit singles and doubles. And every once in a while, I'll get a triple or a home run just because the, someone fumbled the ball and I got away with it, right? I wasn't planning on it, but it happened. I was able to capitalize on it to get advantage of it, right? So good setup for me as far as I'm concerned, right, inside of there. Really liked the overall move of the, the pattern, especially related to what the S&P was doing today. Um, Andre said, UPS entered on a gap down bounce off of the 8 EMA and the 382 Fib9 line need to move up above the 134 half at the 50 Fib line at 135.60. Nice. But you see the plan there, guys? Let me read that again. Slower this time. I know where he was going with it. UPS entered on a gap down, bouncing off the 8 EMA and the, the 382 FIB. It needs to move up above the 134.5, 134.45, to 50 FIB at 135.60. Right? So there's a plan of what the execution is. That's me. We gapped up. I need a pullback and a bounce. I'm looking for it to get within a dollar or so. We got right just shy of that. It was about 75, 80 cents, something like that. I don't do the exact math. It's close enough uh, for government work. We we bounce. I'm looking for about two bucks prior to resistance to get out. We did. We failed. Look at where the stock is sitting right now, right about where it opened. Right? Had a held on trying to get the home run. I'll be back to batting 210. Right? I break even, make a little, cost me a little bit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, on this trade. I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather lock this in and go look for something else to trade. And right, so overall, I looked, uh, so that one I took today. Again, everything is non-funded, right? Google, I love the pattern on Google. I could not get a viable entry. Just couldn't get it. So if we look at the five-minute candle, right, we opened up and we just ran. All right, go look at the one minute on Google. We opened up and, oh, but we pulled back on the second candle, Rob. Yeah, but we closed on the first one minute candle at 163.91, 163.62. So we're about 30 cents away. Maybe I just, I didn't feel it was enough of a pull, of a, a close, you know, a pullback and, and close near. We did, I can't really consider the first one as close near. It was just a close. So I didn't take it. It worked. It's a great move. But I didn't. I didn't get to capitalize on it today. Well, that was strange. My remote control was all the way over there, and that TV went from mute to talking. I don't know how. I got CNBC on back there. I always leave it on. TV runs all through the market hours, somewhere around eight a.m. until about five p.m. It's on every day. Um. So. Didn't find anything else today. I did not take any kind of pivot trades. It was a busy day this morning with some other stuff going on in life. But how many of you, just give me a one for yes or two for no. How many of you actually go out and you have that kind of plan formulated of I'm looking for this, 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 and this to take the trade? We already know exactly what has to happen for you to take. Whether you are taking a singular directional trade, I'm, I'm buying calls or puts. I need that bounce or, or breakout or whatever it is. Or I'm doing a switchback type trade. I know what I'm take what has to happen for it to go up. I know what has to happen for it to go down. Right? Every one of you should have some sort of formulation of what it is you want to see happen uh, for you to do that. Right? And and all my traders are dropping in their their ones. Right? Um, and for everybody, regardless of how good or you are at trading or not. You need to at least have a plan of what to do. You can't show up and say, okay, now what should I do? <clears throat> whether you look at the market the day before, meaning Tuesday for Wednesday, whether you look at it on Thursday morning for Thursday, I don't really care the when you do it. 
I care that you do it. So I do my analysis usually at night. It gives me a little bit of a break. I walk away from the computer for a little bit, go have dinner, spend some time with my family, come back into my office as my wife is doing her things in the evening, come back in the office. My wife's a very avid reader. She's doing audio books and reading books almost at the same time. She's going on a uh, you know, physical book. So she'll go do her thing. I'll come in here. I'll find my candidates for the next day. We'll go back and kind of meet up in the living room then and uh, and just sit down and catch up for the day. And then tomorrow, meaning today, so I would have done this yesterday or over the weekend, tomorrow, well, today now, again, Monday, I I'll sit down in the morning in pre-market. I'll just look at what's going on, what's moving a little bit. What's moved where? How do I capitalize on it? What's my next step? Right? And then I used to have a... Um, a laminated sheet that I had written some rules underneath and I would just put check marks next to it on a laminated sheet of, you know, Apple, Microsoft, whomever. And it were just columns, right? And I could put check, I could write the symbols on top, put co check marks of what was there. If something didn't work, I would just get a tissue, erase it off and leave it blank, put another symbol in there, whatever it was. I had four or five of them on one piece of paper, one uh, laminated sheet. And then that was my, that was my, my plan. This, 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 and this needs to happen, right? And you're going to find the only way you're ever going to be successful in the market, I mean, the only way, is if you've got some for form of plan formulated. Now, I don't mean so rigid and stringent that you say the stock closes $127.50. I'm going to get in when the stock gets up to 127.60 and it gets to 127.61, it blew through the 60. And you go, nope, I'm not taking it. I don't mean that kind of rigidity. What I'm referring to is you've got a general idea of how you're going to take this plan, whether you're going to take it on a 50 cent bounce off support or a dollar bounce off support, you got to have some rules in place. It needs to go at least 50 cents at uh, you know maximum of a dollar and then I'll take it. Right. If it does more than that, less than that, I'm not interested. Right. I, I need that. I need some movement to take place on my position there. That's a formulated plan. It doesn't have to be specific to a penny. Right. This is exactly what has to happen. I like strict rules, but there's boundaries to how strict it can be, okay? All right, let's go look at the S&P 500 because so much is happening uh, on the S&P lately. I mean, so much. It's just wunderbar. Back this up. All right, so we've got our fib drawn in here. Great move on this. Good, good pull back to the 236 and further down. We had an H pattern that went uh, one, two, three lines. So uh, overall, really, really, really nice move on the fib here um, on that H pattern. And we got into a really nice bullish bias, spreading moving averages. And now we're back into just regular all-time highs again and again and again and again and again. Just, it, it seems like it's almost a daily occurrence right now. We're getting highs. If you look at last week, Monday was the black day, the only down day of the week. Um, well, not true, but the only black candle of the week. So we had a, a, a gap down. Tuesday was a good move up. Wednesday was a good move up. We tagged the same high-ish area on Thursday. On, uh, on um, Yeah, Thursday. Friday, we broke out to a new all-time high again. And today we gap up and we just run. And we have almost nothing on the downside for today as far as wick goes. So our open was at uh, 58.29.81, and our low was 58.29.57. It's 24 cents. It dropped 24 cents um, on, uh, for the low of the day, never filled that gap, just great move overall. And the key is, and really one of the things you should do is if you've drawn some fibs, and you drew it a while ago, we drew this off of the pullback, right? Now one of the things we could do is we can go back and we can look at how accurate the fibs have actually been for us, right? So what I mean by that is this. Let me grab a red pen, okay? So we had this fib, we, we drew the fib in there from here to here, V bottom, V top, right? We had the pullback in here and the bounce, okay? So we tagged on that pullback there, right there, yeah, look at this. Look at this pivot. This one, three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we won't really count that day. Um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12 days out of 14, because we didn't count this one here and we didn't count this one here. 12 out of 14 days, we played on that 5724, which is our FIBIT level, right? So we've pulled back to that level. And then what happened? When we finally break out and we go to new highs, we go one, two days right there, boom, we break out here. Today, we gap and go again. And where are we stopping right now? Where are we hesitating? Because we're not closed, right? We still have a couple hours left yet, four hours or so left in the market. We're right at that negative 382 level, which is our next Fibonacci line, right? I, th you know, it's funny. At my youngest daughter um, and her fiance got married this weekend. Uh, so I got two daughters married within a month and a half of each other. Um, they did it for religious reasons. They wanted to get an apartment and move in. They chose to marry first, which I was very happy to for them for that. So we had a very, very small ceremony. Uh, and then we came back here, we had catered some food, we had some people come to help serve and clean up and all that good stuff. But again, very small, just family, very immediate family, parents, brothers, sisters, that's it. I mean, that's all we had, right. And talking with the grooms, my son in law's um, brother, we got talking about the market and the accuracy, because he knows I'm a Fibonacci person. He's a very, he's very, he uses fibs in what he does in his business. He's in uh, the elevator sector, uh, elevator fields. And so he uses Fibonacci in there. There's some calculations that they do that are fib based type calculations. So he's got a good understanding, a good head on his shoulder about fibs. But when we start talking about the accuracy of the of Fibonacci themselves and how important it is, um, he agreed for what he does. Now, for me, I am a gardener, right? So I love to grow. I don't, But listen, don't ask me how to grow a ficus or anything that you can't eat. I have no clue. I can't help you with that. Ask me what the powdery mildew stuff is on your zucchini plant. I know what it is and how to treat it, right? Um, I love to grow. But when you look at um, growing, Fibonacci are a very big part of it. You know, the way the branches on a tree branch out, the leaves uh, on a tree, the pattern of a sunflower, the, the, that it's a, called the Fibonacci circle, which is the same as your shape of your ear, by the way, or a conch shell, right? It's all the same thing, right? The, the accuracy is uh, very high when you look at what happens in the market. Now, does it require you to draw the fibs properly? And the answer is without a doubt, right? Without a doubt. Right. But again, it goes back to the even a, a stopped clock is right twice a day. Right. So, yes, you couldn't have really not a lot of clue of what's going on and still get lucky and get it right at times. OK, but how do we measure that accuracy? And we look at how the fib lines react to the stock hitting it. If we just go back historically and look at the last fib, right. Um, let's, well, I've already pulled this one forward into it though. So it's going to be hard to really look at it. I don't know if we can go further back. Yeah. It's hard to do because I've shortened the fibs up already. So the other fibs would become relevant. But if you look here, we closed right here, right there, these two days here, here, closed just below. We stopped right there. Day two broke down and eh, not too much there. Not too much there. We broke through open, right? Nothing there. Low, low, high, close, all of it. You see what I'm talking about here, guys? Every Everywhere we look, we can see this accuracy. Now, some will say, yeah, but Rob, how do you know what candles it's going to be accurate on? You don't. You don't. And you're not planning on saying, I'm only trading today because today is 100% chance we're getting to that level. Trust me, if we knew that, if I could define it that accurately where I couldn't be wrong, oh, this would be a much different workshop today. Charging millions and millions of dollars if I was able to do that. But we're not. And you shouldn't try to do that. We'll never get to that point. I don't care how good AI gets. It's never going to be able to predict the future like that. Right? We're looking at what's my probability of this happening. And that is where things like fibbits come in and the likes make a tremendous difference for us uh, in the analysis. Um, Andre said, fib lines can be locked as zones of support and resistance. Absolutely. Oh, look. Looked. Looked at Okay, as zones of support and resistance. Absolutely. Jim, how do you grow your money 
tree. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah, options, exactly. Uh, thanks for all the congrats, guys. I appreciate that. Um, actually, when my phone went off before, it was my daughter sending me a three-second video from the wedding where they have my daughter and my son-in-law have um, a year and a half old, I guess. No, they're just shy of two, two-year-old twin nephews. Uh, and they they were the ring bearers and they gave them the boxes and they had them carry them up. And the one boy literally ran and to my daughter and hugged her. The other boy threw the his box at his uncle um, with the rings in it, but she, it was her sending it. But uh, it was a it was a great time. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So now here's the magic question. Where do we go? What's next? We scrunch down, and lo and behold, right above our head, we have a fibbit. Now, when we look at the fibbits, you got to ask yourself, you know, Rob, do we really need them? Is it really, is it really that important if we don't, if we have it in there versus if we don't? And what I want you to look at first off is this. Let me get rid of that for a sec. All right, let me do this. Okay. This is a fibbit. Any black line is a fibbit. This is the one we were just talking about now. All right? If we did not have this fibbit in here, and I didn't do the ABC, right? Which just happened to have some overlap there. All of this playing on this line would have been non-existent. Absolutely not. So was this fib line important? Ding, ding, ding. You bet it was. So what's to say this one doesn't have the same type of value to it? I don't know. Maybe we don't get 12 out of 14 days hitting on this line. I'm okay with that. Right? If it doesn't, I am truly okay with that. But we've got a lot happening at this 59, 17, 59, 18 level. We've got that. We've got the 59, 35, and then there's a blue zone in here as well. So what is the 59, 35 from? I measured this A, the start of the fib to the finish of the fib. And then I drew from there. So that was point A up to point B and a pullback to the lowest low we made and then a bounce. And then you extrapolate from C, you extrapolate out 100%, which is to that green line, 100% to the upside there is the equivalent of whatever this distance was from A to B, this is C to D is the same distance coming off of the lowest low we made on, the, on that pullback in there, okay? So, and I know the screen's getting a little bit busy in there, but that 59.35 level is very important. I, I am fully expecting us to get there. I really wasn't expecting a gap the way we did this morning and for us to run the way we have um, and, and really take up, you know, 55, 60 points already moved today um, from the fib line. I mean, the, the move from the fib line is about 60 points. So I wasn't looking at that happening, but I mean, in this type, type of market condition, we could get there in the next one to two days. I think we'll hit there if nothing else to ring the bell. Whether we stay there or not, I don't know. Keep in mind, we are what? Today is the 14th. So what do we have? Uh, 20 days-ish or so away from uh, an election. There's a lot, a, a lot out there that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks that could drive the market in one direction or another. I, I know that there's a lot of, you know, both sides are trying to, squash or quelch or you know have things not come out and and are saying stuff to to drive the election in their favor and that's just part of politics 101 um which well, i'll never do politics because i'm not going to just beat around the bush from i'm going to go slap them in the face and tell them if i have something to say okay um but all of that could change very very quickly we could see the market skyrocket we could see the market fall right just as fast and just as hard and the attacks on Israel and, and what's coming out of the Middle East, um, and even we're going to talk oil in just a little while, um, are definitely concerning for us as well, right? So, so Tom asks, what does the blue zone represent? This is not a typical blue zone for us, Tom. Um, if we look at a stock, okay, so we look at a stock in here. There's a blue zone between 49607 and 500. It needs to be at least $4 normally for us to draw a blue zone. Now, the S&P 500, well, we're looking at a $5,000 index. So $4 is very tight. 
Um, I don't know where the blue zone went. Interesting. So that so the blue zone is a comfort level or a confluence level, actually, not comfort, confluence level. So I I'm looking at this, and let's say that um let's say this is not down here, but let's say that I have a blue zone up here. Let's say I have a blue zone up here and there's another fib line or some other line is right in there. Okay, Tom. What I'm looking at is as the stock is moving upward, as it's advancing and, and, and pushing up from here, and it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. I'm looking at this blue zone in here as a target area instead of a definitive point. That 527.83 is really the hard line in the sand, but we may stretch into that zone a little bit before failure. So it's just telling us that there's basically, you don't have a sh one piece of sheetrock on a ceiling, you've got a piece of plywood up above it. It's that much harder to get through. But if it does break through, and we do get through that ceiling, right? And now if I can get a pullback and a bounce, I have a much stronger area here because now I've got a piece of plywood and a piece of sheetrock, right? It's just, it's stronger, right? Does that make sense, Tom? Good. Jim said, if you would like to know, there is a fib at 4181. If you have this on your daily chart, right? And we're talking about on uh, S&P now, 4181. Oops, let's get that out. Now that's on your daily chart, your fib at 5473. Wait, okay. I'm trying to follow your, your logic. Hold on a second. 5473. Is it from a previous fib, Jim? Because I don't, I'm not seeing a 5473 here. Well, the 4181 is the brown line. I don't have anything else behind that, personally. There's nothing behind it. But yes, you've got that 4171, and I don't remember the number. You're saying it's 67, 65. Sixty-seven, sixty-five. Yeah, it's so far off. I don't even know the number in my head yet. So that's the next one there, uh, and then the previous one was down here at. Um, oh, my bad. This is this is the forty-one eighty-one. This is the midpoint, which is the fifty-four seventy-three. Okay, got it. No, okay, you're right. You know what, Jim? I don't know why, but I'm thinking that was the fibbit itself. That was the, uh, the 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 fib number rather itself, not the midpoint. So yes, we've got this forty one eighty one level in there as well, which came in to just give us another confluence. Yes, yeah, it is a long way off. We we've got a long way to go. I'm not anticipating that anytime soon to, of getting there. Um, here, I will give you an example, guys. Um, and it, it's not meant to be political. It's just I, I have a friend, someone that I that I'm in a mastermind with who has a newsletter and his newsletter is in the survival space and pre the election with Hillary and um, Trump, they were doing a uh, leading up to that election from a free newsletter. They were doing a couple million dollars a month, three and a half, three to three and a half million dollars a month in sales from their free newsletter. Right. Uh, with the expectation that Trump was not going to win. Okay. Um, he did. He won. And what happened? Their sales dropped to about a million dollars a month. Now, he wasn't complaining that he was making only a million dollars a month in sales. Right. But that's to show what political decisions or what who wins in the White House, how much of an effect it can potentially have on the overall market. So. Uh, all of this uh, political wind that is out there right now is huge. Right. How does it how does it how do we handle everything that's coming up with the war in the Middle East, the war in Russia, the potential of what China is going to attack to take over some places over there? There's a lot of a lot of concerns out there. And how is each person going to handle it? Um, whether you like someone or not really has nothing to do with it. This is about how do we make money based on what these individuals do, because these crackerjack ding dongs are going to be around forever. These politicians, whether we hire 
Arnold Schwarzenegger, or, or not hire him, but make him the president or the governor or whatever else as an actor and a bodybuilder that said, I'll be Bach. You know, okay, uh, how did that ever happen, right? But there are decisions they're going to make and views that they're going to hold and carry that will make a difference in what happens in our markets. Right now, the market's liking what they see um, out there, right? Or else there's no reason we're hitting these all-time highs like this. Yeah, <laughs> back to Gipper. <laughs> Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Um, there's a sit-in stage at the NICE right now, Brenda. Is that for right now? Or are you just you talking that we should do something like that? Okay. Let's look at the VIX real quick. Are you just starting on CNBC? Yeah, I don't know. It's I got a commercial on right now. So um, I'm looking forward to this day falling off. Because when I get rid of that bar, we get a much better look of what the VIX looks like. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just wondering what's going on at the end of CNBC 10 minutes ago. Interesting. Is there a sit in at the New York Stock Exchange today? Two hours ago, protesters staged sit-in at New York Stock Exchange to spotlight, Ga to spotlight Gaza attacks. Okay. So VIX, we're in a moderate or medium level. I don't care about moving averages on VIX. I, I, I just want to know the, the pattern and the direction it's headed in. We're overall down. We're down 64 cents today. I like that. We're at a very comfortable range. Prices are still fairly cheap on options. Of course, the open of the market and things like that can drive prices just a bit. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go take a, 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 let me go back into the presentation. Let's go back in here. And let's talk about oil prices and the election. Now, again, we talked a little bit of the election of what's happening there. There's a lot of concern of what's going on in the Middle East, Iraq, Iran, wherever you're, 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 you're hearing the latest stories from of the oil flow that's coming out of there, things coming out unchecked. Russia is um, crushing it on the oil that they're send, selling right now to various countries. Again, unchecked. It doesn't matter what sanctions you put on it. It makes no difference. They're, they're doing what they do, right? This is a daily oil contract. Um, takes us back to October of 22, right? So this is oil prices, Okay. You can see we got down here into these, um, you know, 55 or so, whatever that low was on that day, uh, all the way up to the highs here. It took us into about 88 and jingle. Uh, and then we have a high here, a lower high here, and what looks like now another lower high here. A lower low. Uh, we had a higher low. Lower low, higher low. So we're getting kind of this stair steppity pattern. It's a two-step to the downside, basically, is what it's coming down to. But we're sitting right now at about $73, $74 a barrel right now for this. And this is just the, um, <clears throat> this is the continuous contract, okay? It's not a particular uh, quarterly or, or anything, or monthly contract. It's continuous. So one of the comments this morning on CNBC was that, um, the usage of oil is drying up of what was expected to be used in China. So you got all this production coming out. The usage, is, their usage is getting less, right? So we're seeing oil prices at a, a fairly stable price. Now, don't get me wrong. Come next month, I need to negotiate oil contract on my house. We do not have gas. When we when we bought our home, there was no gas. When we did the construction, we bought our home in um, ninety seven. We did the construction in 05 on it. There was no gas in 05 either. It was, I think, just to bring the line in, I had to pay over $10,000 to bring the line. And um, we actually went to the gas company and said, if I have to pay for that line, then if you tap off of it, you need to pay me. And the gas company said, yeah, we own the line. We're not doing this. I'm not giving you the, the, the I'm not paying for a line that you're going to use for your other customers. Um, so we wound up not putting gas in and today it's just, it's not something that's worth it for us to go and destroy our, um, 
property to get gas into the house now. You got to rip up concrete and pavers and everything else just to get it in. So I've got to negotiate oil very shortly. So I'm looking for that $65 price range again, right, on oil. Um, it is, you can get places cheaper right now. Uh, there's a company called Slomans, which is a local oil company uh, that is doing a fairly inexpensive price. But they fight. Every year you got to switch companies to, to maintain a decent price. But I'd like to see it come down some. So I'm, I'm good with that continuation, that move to the downside. I'm, I'm tickled pink if we can get that there. But again, go back to the election. And you have to. You cannot, in your mind, not think the election is going to play into the pricing of oil. If the Democrats win, they are going to continue to push the, the oil down. I don't know what the Democratic um, position is on fracking because I've heard the candidate give both answers. Yes, I'm for fracking, no, I'm against it. So I don't know what they are or aren't anymore as far as drilling, you know, and and and, this, and likes. Um, and they're going to push more towards solar, you know, battery powered and so forth. So what happens to the price of oil? Well, if you force people to change where they can't no longer, you're not allowed to buy a gasoline car, you're going to force energy prices down because no one's going to want to, no one's going to buy it. They're not going to have, you're not going to have the need for it. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if the Republicans win and they want to open up the pipeline and build pipelines all the way from Canada through the whole U S blah, blah, blah. And, and just feed every city with Canadian oil, U S oil, more, more, more drilling, you'll also see prices uh, shift from where they are. So unless something dramatic happens, this next four years can have a major impact on energy prices. And if you go back and look, you will see that I remember as energy got down, oil prices got down around that, you know, very low. I mean, we were looking at $25 contracts on crude oil. Now there were ridiculous... The, the market makers knew they had a massive bid ask spread on those contracts, like five dollars of bid ask spread on those contracts, because they knew that it was way lower than it should have been, right? And then there's no way it's going to stay there forever, right? But if the U.S. comes back to oil independence, you're going to see the price, and we don't, and we no longer rely on other countries. And if sanctions are actually put on Russia and some of those um, for for dumping, and Russia has been known for that. Forever. And not just for oil, by the way. I was in the steel industry. We used to buy coils, 20,000 pound coils of steel and manufacture product from it. And I remember when the sanctions went against Russia for dumping on the steel. And you know how many coils of steel it stopped Russia from dumping after they put 20% sanctions on whatever it was? Zero. They just kept doing it. They didn't care. Whatever the reasons, I'm not going to get into the, the economic parts of it, but uh, they just kept dumping that oil in there. So we may make money off sanctions if we can collect. But oil will definitely play a big part of it. The election is going to play a big part. So how do you trade it now? Guys, when I look at trading companies like, you know, or sectors like oil, I look for the big guns. I look for the Exxon Mobiles uh, and the Chevrons. And those are the ones that I like to trade. Now, one of the things that you can do if we go back over to Omega Charts and let's say that we go over to um, ExxonMobil, right? ExxonMobil, and, and we don't use this enough. We, we don't talk about this feature enough. How about that? They are in the energy sector. They're in the integrated oil and gas subsector and an XOM is just the symbol of the stock. If I click on that XOM box, it gives me all the other stocks in the integrated oil and gas subsector, which is part of the energy sector. Right. So you've got British Petroleum, Conoco, Chevron, Hess, Imperial, Marathon, Murphy, Oxy Petroleum, Petrobras, uh, Suncor. We got Exxon Mobil there. Right. And and the likes. OK. But there are other companies you didn't notice in there. Didn't see in there. Right. Some of you might think of other energy companies. So, well, I didn't see them in there. Well, if we go to um, integrated oil and gas, uh, actually, that is. Right, that's the one we were in. So um, drilling, right? So now we're looking at the drilling. So you don't have, it's going to bring up the subsector, uh, you know, of the, 
of that. The components, you've got um, rig, which is Transocean, right? And so forth. So I would be looking at the bigger names out there, the Exxon Mobiles, the Chevrons, the British Petroleums, uh, maybe, maybe, because British Petroleum, British, right? And it's not here. It may not have the same effect, but it's going to affect U.S. markets. But the bigger companies are who I tend to trade, right? I do like, if we go back to, you know, I do like the Oxy. Um, um, I do like, yep, Jennifer, I like Conoco. Uh, they definitely have some opportunities to them. Imperial is good. Murphy is good. Different um Marathon, different type of oil. I mean, Murphy, different type of oil. Um, Petrobras, it's not us, right? But a little bit lower priced. Or you go into the ETFs, you know, some of the various ETFs out there. I just had this conversation with um, somebody over gold. Of They were looking to buy gold, again, because of the pending election. They wanted to buy some gold in advance. And how do I buy it? Do I buy the gold coin? Um, itself, do I buy shares in a company that may or may not have it? Like, you know, um, do I buy the the ETF? You know, like Barrett Gold, right? Do I buy the ETF like G O L D or G L D? One of them is the ETF. Um, do I buy those or do I buy it and have somebody else house it overseas? Meaning, there are companies that you pay and they will manage or hold on to your gold forever for you. I just got a problem with that. You know, it's just I'm not a fan. Um, and you got to have a lot. You're a Robert Kiyosaki to be paying what these guys get just to keep your gold. Uh, but it's out of the U.S. It is accessible. You could show up there, prove who you are, and walk out with your gold. Right? They do physically have it there for you. So uh, I like to trade the bigger names. Right? The Exxon Mobiles are, are my favorites. Right? Are they big movers? Nah, they're not. They're not big movers. If we look at template number one. They move $2.37 a day. It's not a big mover at all. COP, Conoco, 260, CBX, Chevron, 280. All right. We don't really have a big mover out there. All right. Well, uh, intraday, man. Intraday. But these are the big guns. These are the ones that are going to have the biggest effect on it. If you want to look at who might be benefiting from the lower price of, of gas, who might benefit from a lower gas price? What companies might benefit from lower gasoline prices? Drop them in the chat. That's the first place my head went, Barry. Airlines. Trucking. Manufacturing. Anything transportation, Andres, yep. I agree. So these, uh, I mean, airlines, look, airlines, if they're savvy enough, they're buying futures on oil. So they're guaranteeing their price out. Into, yes, yes. That's what I was hoping someone was going to get, Jim. FedEx and UPS, shipping prices, right? Um, airlines are buying their, their future, are buying futures out on their fuel, jet fuel, so they can at least guarantee what their costs are going to be. Well, when gas, when fuel hit $100 a barrel, $150 a barrel, Southwest had had, had uh, futures contracts they had bought, one savvy futures trader for them, bought that they were getting their, their oil like $40 or $50 a barrel. They were crushing it, killing it on profits, right? Where you would listen to a Delta Airlines was losing a million dollars a day just in fuel costs. Just on fuel, okay, because of the what it was costing them and the inability to raise prices and the likes, okay? So that's how I would look to trade it. Again, election will play into it. you got to see what's going to come out of it. But you've got to think of what the end result becomes. If we drill more, we have less need here for oil from other places, so it's going to drive oil prices down. If we um, go more into the electric cars and get rid of the gas stoves and that you're going to see it drive down as well. We have a, a tremendous supply under the U S uh, I think we need to use it. Um, and if you look at clean energy as it's called, um, and that is a, a lobbyist term, 
get clean energy because it takes a tremendous amount of dirty energy to make clean energy. Just keep that in mind. Go, go and do the research on that. Right? Um, uh, yeah, many companies have done amazing, Jim, exactly, on, on their oil contracts. Yep. Um, yeah, RoboTaxi, I, I mean, look, I saw the 40-person the bus, Jennifer, that came out from um, uh, Elon. I saw it over the weekend on the news, one of the news channels. I like it. But, guys, there are, in my opinion, Tesla – has a major advantage advantage over every other company out there, right? Because you have two major companies out there, Uber and Lyft, right? These two, Kathy Woods came out and said, Elon Musk is going to supply all vehicles to Uber and Lyft for unmanned Autonomous driving. No, but there will be no drivers anymore at some point, right? It'll happen. Maybe not in my lifetime, but it's going to happen. But she said something like, I want to say 2029. Maybe it was 2032. I don't remember the exact year, somewhere in that range, though. Um, Tesla is going to be at $2,900 a share. Right. And I bought Tesla almost immediately after that. I bought share and I bought more shares of Tesla at that point. Right? Do I think it goes twenty nine hundred? I don't know. But they are they have the control on that that market. Period. And what she knows or knows of Kathy Woods is Tesla is going to provide the vehicles. Ubers and Lyft, Lyft type companies will run the company, and he will get paid for every mile the car is driven. Oof. Oof, All right? Uh, Barry said, it takes energy to build solar modules, but not that much. Um, I can't even pronounce that word, Barry, but photovoltaic modules return their energy costs within four, thin, whew, okay. Um, Yowser. <laughs> I appreciate it though, Barry. A little more engineering than I can even pronounce. Um, yeah, it's down today, so maybe a good buy opportunity. Uh, listen, guys, this announcement's been out for months, so this is not a new thing. I'm not saying you should go get Tesla based on this, but if we get to these autonomous driving vehicles, um, I think drivers for Uber and Lyft are gone. I don't think there's any reason for it. You need a staff in an office. AI takes care of the reservations. There is nobody of, we're waiting to find a driver for you. No, ding, there's a car within two minutes away. Done, it's coming. There is none of this garbage of an Uber driver calling me and saying, listen, I can't pick you up. Can you cancel the ride? No, I'm not canceling the ride. Well, I can't come and get you. I said, then you're the one that's fine, going to be fine for it if you don't show up. And then they go ahead and can't. They don't want to cancel because they get in trouble for it. But I'm not canceling because I get in trouble for it. So, no. But there is none of that. All that goes away. There's no Nobody is tired. They don't have to have different shifts. Right? The, the car just keeps driving. Um, electricity, you have to build more plants to create electricity. Will people allow electrical plants to be built near their houses? Yeah, that's a very valid point. We went, uh, when we were driving out to this park where my daughter got married this weekend, uh, we drove past this area that I'm very familiar with the area on the highway. And all of a sudden there are three massive cell towers that have never been there before with, I don't know, 30 different cell devices on them. And you got the big town and they put the, the cell connections there. There are about 30 of them on there. How good is that for the people that live there? You know, I don't know. All right, let's go take a look at the market. What stocks do you guys want me to check out? Drop them in. If you put them in earlier, please drop them in again because I'm, I can't go back with all of these answers and find them. It is impossible. What happens when the driverless car goes bonkers? Yeah, amen, brother. I get you. I'm with you. All right, so uh, Timothy and Brenda both asked for NVIDIA. Let's take a look at that. Um, NVIDIA, big fan, big fan of NVIDIA. Woo! 
Love it, baby. Love it. It's back up near its all-time highs. Uh, 31 to 40. Uh, let me make this a bit smaller. We're at nine and a half bucks. 31 to 40 is nine bucks. Nine and a half. Yeah, we don't need a pivot in there. We're right. We're spot on right there. We don't need to split that level in half. We will need to split the level up above, though. Ah, it's already done. Okay. So we, we have a negative eight or nine in there. So right now, break the 140, 67 retest and bounce. 148 is resistance. Ideally, I'd rather see the pullback to the 131 and bounce, right? Uh, but not until we hit that 140. Well, we might have already. We might be close enough. And we probably are. We probably are today, right? <laughs> Listen, I'm a big fan of, of NVIDIA. <clears throat> they, own the chip, they own chip technology, guys. Unless, unless something strange happens, NVIDIA, in my opinion, is going to lead the industry for decades, Um, will somebody come in and buy them up? I don't know if anybody can afford to buy them anymore. I mean, not with what the future cast is for these guys. Uh, massive company, right? So I like NVIDIA a lot. I'm just not crazy about it here. I would love to see us get above the all-time high we had right there. Right? Which wasn't by much, but it was all-time there. All right, so I hope that helped. Let me know down below. Um, Brenda's asking for SPY. All right, we're in the same scenario there on SPY. Uh, that gap and go, I really would love to see that gap fill. So I'd like to pull back to the 579 in the bounce. 585 is resistance. Um, if it does break out and you get a retest of that 585, breakout, retest, and bounce, you've got an ABC in there at 593 is where I'd look first, and then 597.5 on the upside. So I hope that one helps. Uh, let's see, Netflix. You're welcome, Brenda. <clears throat> so Netflix pulled back a little bit today. Right, we're at all time highs on Netflix right now, okay? Very expensive stock, very expensive options. Ver when I say very expensive, expensive in comparison to others, okay? We're in a bullish neutral bias right now. Um, I don't mind it down here. I need to get back above the 728 retest and bounce. And there's the new entry back in on um, Netflix, okay? <clears throat> uh, next one up is uh, Timothy's asking for VST. So Jennifer, I hope that helped on Netflix. Um, VST. Okay. Who is that? Vistra Energy. Ah, okay. Energy company. Here we go. All right. So I can see we've had a big move lately. So we're going to draw a fib right there. So Timothy, good one, because I don't have this on my list. All right. Let's try that one more time. All right, so buttons, 13 and a half, 27, 37. Yeah, we need fibbits in there. So we're going to put a negative 136 and a 118. Um, okay, so Timothy, I like where it's at. Give me the pullback to the 127. I've got a confluence of the eight. Man, we're rocking. Great setup all the way up to the 135. Could have been a good bounce on the last candle. Timothy, you talking about this day here? <clears throat> on Friday's bounce? Today, well, today was a gap up. So possibly, if you look at a five-minute chart on VST, right now we've got to look at a one-minute chart because the five is not really there. It's not giving us anything. So I never really got a good retest, Timothy. I mean, we got close, I guess, but I would like to have seen a little bit closer than that. Maybe. It's a matter of how aggressive you are on the entry. But I really would prefer the pullback. This is a breakout to me. I'd rather see the pullback. I hope that helps. Um, Karen's asking for AMD. <clears throat> Guys, by the way, if you get some emails from us that you're like, what? Where am I getting an Omega charts that I just subscribed? We did a test yesterday and saw that it 
on moving over these groups on our database and saw that it did that. It sent an email out. So if you got that, just ignore it. Um, AMD, Karen, we're kind of in the middle there. Uh, I'd like to see us get back above the 172 retest and bounce up to 179.5 as resistance. Break to the downside, you've got to below 162 and a quarter as well. Fall, retest, and drop. Um, I hope that helps. Let's see. Jennifer's asking for Costco. All right. So we've got 76, 86, 96, 20. We don't need to fib it in there. We already have it. Let's see the entire thing. Good. Um, so if you look at where the fibs are on it, Jennifer, it's 419 up to 612. All right. So we're in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of nowhere. I need this to make a move. It's it's not helping me anywhere here. Um, it's got to get back above the 900 retest and bounce. Problem is we've got a low, a high, a lower high, a lower high. Uh, about the same high, low, lower, low. So we're not looking like a good pattern here at all. But then there is always bearish below the 876.65 level. Yeah, Jim said, remember, earnings are happening soon on AA. Uh, AA reports on Wednesday the 16th. Remind traders to see where the earnings are for the stocks that they're asking about. Absolutely. Very valid point, Jim. Right, You always want to know when your earnings are coming up. Brian, do you mean when do I redraw the fibs? Because that's a whole lesson in and of itself. Um, yeah, so draw, redrawing the fibs, there's three times to redraw. One is when you have a bigger move than the previous move was. So this move here for the fib, if this move was larger, we would redraw. Okay, that's one. Another one would be is if you're, you know, you start getting eight to 10 months old, the FIB, you want to start looking for new places to draw. Uh, and a, a, another one is when you close, a, close above the negative 618 or down below the 882 in this case, um, it's time to redraw. And with that, we're a couple minutes over. Uh, for the day. So here's what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> Andrew's going to leave the room open for a few minutes. We're going to drop in the link again for if you like it, then you should have put a fib on it. And go ahead and get registered for that free training. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all at our next update. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye for now.